Hmm. Well, it gets so bad, I gotta do it. Oh. Just mocking up where the sink's gonna go on the scrap piece of plywood. All right, well, didn't turn out too bad, one cut. Now, this countertop will stick out a half inch past this frame. So that's all gonna be wood there. I had to leave enough back here for my stone. And, um, which is about an inch. So that look good. Um, of course, faucet goes here, sprayer there, which I don't need the sprayer because the faucet is a removable sprayer. So that just gets the little cap in there. Um, this is a nice thick sound dampening. So if you you know drop silverware or stuff in there, don't make that terrible sound. It's got the, these sound pads on it. And once that silicone down and it's, you know. But I needed to figure out or give me an idea on centering the sink with the window. Now the faucet won't be centered with the window because this is like a bar sink. I don't know why, but I, I wanted the sink centered on the window. So, um, not a bad size sink for such a little little area it's, it's deep and it's got one of these real nice it's got the little strainer basket in there to catch all your nasty not that we're gonna really have much of that and that goes down inside there strainer down inside there you can lift out so then that gives me an idea of the length of hex I'll need under there coming across here of course there gets a bench here built and the plumbing will run through the bench the bench will be removable plumbing is attached to the wall this drawer here the Berkey in there right now so the back of this drawer I'm going to cut down enough to get the one inch tubing and the pex through just in the back of this drawer because the only way to get back there because this little framing is against the wall is to notch this down in the back so then when this drawer comes in and out this is a specifically made drawer for a specific reason 
It's not the Berkey. This is going to have dividers in it for our iron skillets. So nothing's going to be piled up that high. So I can notch this out. And then the, the drain tubing and the PEX pipes can run through there. And that'll close and miss everything. Because this is an inch, so that tubing's got to come to the, the front of those two 80-20 bars and the back 80-20 bar there. So it's going to come out right through that section. Um, so I'll have to make way for it out of this um, drawer glide uh, board. But that won't work. We're going to make that work. So it's not a problem. And then this bench is going to be built in such a way that it'll un rib nuts on the floor, it'll unbolt. It can slide out, or the back will flip up. The bottom will flip up for storage. The back can flip up to access the water and the, all that stuff back here. But if I needed to, for some reason, pull plumbing off the wall, this thing will also slide right on out of there. So, no. Uh, but yeah, that, um, sound nice and dun, 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 that is. A lot of stainless steel sinks don't do that. Um, because of the bar sink, it's made to not be clangy. Um, so this is all insulated. So that's, that's good. That's good. So, you'll have a good inch of counter sticking out in front of this sink. I could I could push this and go back further, but I want to be able to not rub my fingers on the back wall and this backsplash when I'm cleaning, you know, rubbing cleaning down the back of that. So it's fine. I don't mind it being up close here because like I said, these are this is only 18 inch cabinet with a half inch overhang on the on the um I could go an inch overhang. Give me more counter space, but I don't think it'll look right with a full inch because this frame size is only an inch, you know what I'm saying? So that's why. Yeah. And the whole idea is when we're traveling, then <laughs> I bought a size sink that. A Berkey that's got a nice padded bag it can ride there as we're traveling up the road I'm gonna hurt nothing so and we did we used this Berkey before we moved from our own house we used it for a year and we loved it so So that gives me an idea there. So then also another thing I got to try to figure out is how I'm going to go from this, which is, I don't even have my tape measure on me to even tell you. All right. You know, this is that slip pipe, you know, um, I forget what it's called, but the outside wall inch and seven sixteenths. So I gotta go from that down to an inch inside diameter um, tubing. So, which is this stuff here. That's what's gonna run along that wall and we'll go down into the tank. So, I gotta try to reduce this down to a one inch hose barb or something some way somehow so that that's going to be the next dilemma i mean i could just shove that up in there and silicone it for gravity fed water that might work because that fits pretty tight up in there <laughs> i might have solved my own dilemma what do you think why wouldn't that work if that fits that snug, a 
because evidently this tapers. I didn't know it tapers, but it does. See, it's real loose down here. But the further up you go, the tighter it gets. And then you look inside there, you can see the you can see the tubing, and it's just as tight and sealed up as you can get. Don't even have the problem, do I? So that is going to work. That is exactly what I'm going to do. I am going to shove that thing up in there. Run me some food grade. Well, I don't need food grade, but that's what I have. Silicone caulk right around there. So it puts a little chamfer all the way around that hose. I'll put some on the hose before I shove it up in there. I'll make sure that's cut nice and straight, which that isn't. And like I said, I'll put a chamfer of caulk around there so it gives it a little taper so there's not this blunt end for anything to... Not that it, it's got a nice strainer in there, but you know. So I think I already solved that. So that was easy. Thank mm -hmm. you.